Mental Testing and Intelligence Theory, Terman's Termites, History of Psychology, Professor Michael Botwin, California State University, Fresno. Lewis Terman is one of those historical individuals that really fascinates me. He made major contributions to the study of intelligence during his lifetime. He was responsible for many things, including translating the Simon Bonnet scales and norming them and validating them for American samples. But what we're mainly going to talk about in this video is his most interesting, at least to me, contribution, which is his study of gifted children, who became known as Terman's Termites. was a Stanford psychology professor who was awarded many honors during his career, including becoming president of the American Psychological Association. He's most known for translating and refining the Binet-Simon intelligence test, which became the Stanford Binet test. Later, he further refined these tests, and they became the Stanford Achievement Test. And he set the pace for many of the ideas used in intellectual testing today. From my perspective, though, the most interesting part of Terman's work is his study of gifted children, and the sample has become known as Terman's Termites over the years. Not to be confused with Herman's Hermits, a 1960s British invasion rock band. Now, Terman recruited 1,528 participants between 3 and 28. They had to have a level of IQ measured as genius, which he uh, defined as 135 or greater. The sample was overwhelmingly white, urban, and middle class, almost all from California. Uh, so it's a bias sample. You have 856 boys, 672 girls. Uh, very skewed, no diversity at all in the sample. You have two African Americans, six Japanese Americans, and one American Indian. This is using determines classifications for ethnicity, which is uh, obsolete at this point. The termites had above edu average educational backgrounds, and Terman followed them for a significant part of their lives, and other researchers continued his work after Terman retired. General finding, gifted children become gifted adults. There was a notion at the time that gifted children were abnormal and would have severe problems later in life. And Terman's work put that one to rest and found that it was a specious idea. Two-thirds of the Terman men and women earned bachelor's degrees. Now, this work, primary work was done before the Second World War, and before that time, college education was extremely rare in this country. In fact, Terman's sample had 10 times the national rate of earning bachelor degrees for that period of time. Hafstorf, who worked on the sample later on, uh, even makes a lawyer's joke about the educational attainment of the termites. Uh, and he says there were 97 PhDs, 57 MDs, and to quote him, sadly enough, 92 lawyers. So I guess we psychologists even get a shot to pick at the occasional lawyer joke. But if you look at that, that's about 250 out of 50 getting advanced degrees. If you look at the average median per capita income and family income across both time periods, you see that it doesn't stack up very well against the whopping salaries earned by the termites as adults. The women in the sample reached adulthood in the 20s and 30s, 
and they looked more like contemporary women than their peers. Terman women had fewer children than other women in their generation. They also had them later in life. More of the Terman women went to graduate school and college, and more had careers. Primarily due to the cohort effects of the time, many more of them remained unmarried than the average women of their day. Terman had strong views on how gifted children should be treated in society. He defined gifted as being in the top 1% of intelligence nationally. Now, picture here shows some of the termites on an old show called Quiz Kids, which was a radio show. They're dressed up here for a publicity picture. And it was kind of the equivalent of the current show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Terman believed gift and children should be identified as early as possible in childhood. They should be given accelerated programs in school and have a different curriculum and instruction that suits their capacities and abilities. They should have specially trained teachers and should be seen as a national resource for the betterment of society. This fits into Galtonian views on helping to select intelligence into the population. This has been a We Have Couches video production, copyright 2020, Professor Michael Botwin, all rights reserved. Bye now.